side of it. The cardio side of it has to. I mean, you're you're built like a fucking brick shit house. <laughs> well, I would imagine that's really hard to have heart like you giant fucking legs and yeah. you're stacked. Yeah, I mean, like yeah. Olympic Short, lifters. Thick. Yeah, yeah. That's not necessarily what I would think of in terms of like someone who's a cardio machine. I would think you, you're fueling so much muscle. Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, just taking in enough calories and fuel for the day is is a full time job. Like when I was training and competing. I'm taking in two to 3,000 calories a day just in liquid. What's a typical Good. meal for you? Oh, man, you have to ask my wife that one. She she does all, she my, does all the cooking yeah, and meal prep? Yeah, everything. Do you um, have those little plastic things you open no, up? And, no. no, it's like I'll, I'll just text her when I'm on my way home from the gym. And like, hey, be home in 10. And then I walk in and like there's a whole plate. But like I'm like a child at breakfast. I hate eating breakfast. And it's like she'll have like the three, four eggs, the bagel, cream cheese, fruit, vegetable. Like, why do you hate this, eating breakfast? I just I don't like eating first thing in the morning. But you have to because yeah. you need the fuel. Yeah. yeah. So it's like I'm like a child sitting there, and she's like, "No, you're not allowed to leave until you clean your plate." <laughs> I'm like, oh, "Shit!" Like, so now it's like now that I'm not training as a career, I'm like I won't eat until two, three in the afternoon. I just and how old? Water. How old are you now? Thirty-one now. And what made you decide to retire at thirty-one? Because it seems like. That's like kind of your athletic peak, no? Yeah, uh, yeah. I think people peak at different ages. I mean, like I had my best performance ever, um, like my last competition. But it was just time, you know. We were done with it. Yeah, like when I when I did weightlifting, it's like I rode that bus until the wheels fell off. Mm -hmm. And like when I left it, I had resentments. I didn't like it. You know, I coughed ties with a lot of people, just because I didn't know how to handle it. Um, and so with CrossFit, I wanted to make sure that I left it still wanted to be a part of that community like mm. i still want to feel good about showing up to competitions keep my friends like all this stuff so you know like it's been a goal of mine for a long time to like you know get certain records in the in the sport so i hit that record and there's just been too many other things in my life that i've put on hold and i'm like okay i'm good like i've done everything in the space that i wanted to do now i want to pursue some of these other things that i've put on hold and you know like my whole life has revolved around this for seven, eight years now of, you know, not traveling, not going out to meals, not hanging out with friends. It's like, no, like from eyes open to eyes closed revolves around this. So when we talked about meals, you said you don't like eating breakfast. But what would a breakfast be for you when you were in peak form? Uh, I mean, the typical like probably four eggs, four or five strips of bacon, bagel, cream cheese bowl of oatmeal, bowl of fruit, a uh, big jug of water. I mean, nothing crazy. It was just like the quantities I was having to put down. And are you supplementing as well? Yeah, like just the typical like protein, creatine, pre-workout. Uh, Vitamins? A shitload of beta alanine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah beta no, alanine nothing, works. Nothing crazy. Oh, I love that stuff. That stuff works. Yeah, yeah, I can't believe more people don't take it. Like I found where I could buy it just on its own, like not mixed in a pre-workout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it just kept it in my gym bag, just like a scoop before every training session. What do you think beta alanine does for you? It makes me feel like I have a third lung. Mm. And then, so that, that's how I always felt it was. Like I felt like I had a third lung when I took it. Um, and, and you then, would just take it with water? I mean, I would just like dry scoop and then swig it down with really? a cup of water. It tastes weird. Yeah, I didn't really have much. The one I had yes. didn't have much of a taste. It was more just like your mouth gets tingly yeah. right away because it had the direct contact there. And you would do that how often before workout or how how far before you were working out? Uh, I mean, like 10 minutes. Oh, like Because okay. I would do like a very gradual warm-up activation, all that stuff going in. So by the end of the warm-up, like you're rubbing your face just like, oh, shit, it's kicking in. Here we go. <laughs> but then someone, someone told me that it actually blocks – was it lactic acid production? Hmm. Um, so I was like, oh, okay. That makes sense. That makes sense for yeah. why I feel so good when I take this. Because, mm. like, so much of CrossFit is just like, all right, A, who can spike their heart rate and keep it there the longest? And then who can, like, hold off the lactic acid the longest? And when you would take beta alanine, what dose? Like, what's the... Uh... I wish I could tell you. I didn't even do that much research on it. <laughs> <laughs> it was... <laughs> people, people that are, like, so meticulous about their, their supplements and their training are probably screaming right now. Ah! Oh, I mean, like, I mean, even at the games every year, it's like everyone has their prepackaged food, like they're weighing out their chicken, their white rice, their broccoli, mm -hmm. and I'm just scarfing down Snickers bars. Like, ah. As soon as I come off the floor and it's like, well, I worked with experts 
in like each of these divisions of like you know this guy who trains triathletes like he's a scientist that shows these guys how to be optimal and he's the one telling me he's like yo if you're doing a 60 minute workout like coca-cola and a and a snickers bar as soon as you're done isn't like, that crazy i was like oh okay so I, like, I can never eat a snickers again i've eaten so many over my career for the last like three four years floyd mayweather it's, was always drinking coke or pepsi after he trains and yeah. people are like this is crazy he's ruining his body and i'm like no 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 he's he knows what he's doing yeah he's he's dumping sugar into his muscles so it was this guy i went out um i think he's the university of colorado and he has like the sports lab like at the university and the typical like put you on a treadmill with a gas mask and heart rate wires all this stuff and he just keeps ticking up the treadmill going faster and faster until you drop and it's like every three minutes he's like pricking your finger and drawing blood and like he's telling you where all the different levels are and i'm like i don't care like you just tell me what i should do to get better i don't want to know where i'm weak just tell me how to get better and uh and he was telling me he's like like don't drink the bottle of Gatorade drink like you buy the scoop of the powder and mix a gallon worth into like eight ounces of water whoa and I was like oh <laughs> that much huh <laughs> and so it's like you do these like 90 minute zone two training sessions where you're just on a spin bike or running for 90 minutes and he's like as soon as you're done slug that down and it's just like sludge yeah and it's like oh this sucks but it gets into the muscles yeah I mean it's I, I don't know the science behind it's, it. I it's just weird. listen to smarter people that are smarter than me that know what they're doing. And I'm like, okay, cool. So he's like, yeah, eat Snickers bar after a workout, slug down like scans Gatorade and you're good to go. I'm like, okay. Now, does he want you to do the Gatorade because it also has electrolytes along with all the sugar? I, I think it was just the sugar. Really? It was just like the condensed, like, so, I mean, I had good performances the last couple of years. So I'm like, all right, <laughs> what you told me is working. I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't have a background in exercise science or anything like that. So half the time when these people are telling me these things, I'm just kind of like, all right, this is, this is your world. You're the pro in this. I'll... Do you think that having this background in Olympic lifting was a giant advantage? Huge, huge advantage. I mean, not only am I coming into the sport with lifts that are like, already like messing with the top guys but now i know how to move my body efficiently so like a lot of times if you see these guys on like longer workouts where it has like 30 snatches at the end of it or you know just this high volume of olympic lifting by the end